Hey, it's Denise, and I actually just did an unboxing, and there was a little problem with the order, and I was going to, um, my initial idea was I was saying at the end of the video that I'll put in the comments how the company deals with the problem with the order, because to me, sometimes you don't know how good or bad customer service is going to be until there is a problem with an order. And let's face it, we're all human. A person packing a box can make a mistake. And to me, like I said, we're all human. It happens. What matters next is how do they handle it? Um, and I'm happy to tell you that It's Delish handles it very well. I recently had an experience with Michael's, you know, the craft, uh, you know, craft and art kind of company and trying to resolve an issue with them when I had to order online I don't have a store near me and their customer service was was awful so a place can have products you like but if their customer service is terrible I won't deal with them again so I am very happy to report that not only am I once again thrilled with the items that I got from It's Delish but I decided after I, after I spoke to them on the phone, which they answered like that, a live human being answered the phone, um, totally personable, friendly, knowledgeable. Um, I told her that an item was missing from my order. She just asked me my order number off my invoice, and um, I told her what was missing, and she said no problem, they would have one out in the mail to me. Uh, I also, the reason that everything is out of the box, um, they had packed one of those cold, you know, like ice packs that have like that gel stuff in it, because one of the things I ordered, well, I'll show you, uh, one of the things I ordered is chocolate, is uh, this Viennese crunch, which is like an English toffee, like the hard toffee, almost like a Heath bar on the inside with nuts, which is then covered in chocolate and then covered in nuts. So they had wrapped this in some of that like silver uh, insulating bubble wrap type of wrap with one of those cold packs with it to keep it cool in transit. Unfortunately the gel pack exploded. So what the actual you know priority mail uh, shipping box was completely soggy and kind of falling apart and so when I was opening it at first I thought it was wet because it was it's raining it's been it's been raining all day and I thought maybe the post office at some point had it sitting where it, maybe it got wet but you know how that that gel stuff has like a slimy feel to it that's very different than just water so I realized pretty quick that that's what had happened um, the good news is Everything is in plastic bags, so none of the products were damaged at all. And so, and it's kind of funny because when I was speaking to the customer service person on the phone, she asked me if I was um, east of the Rocky Mountains. Now, that made me glance at the packing slip and notice that they are located in California. Now, I'm in northeastern New York State, so I'm about as far east of the Rocky Mountains as you can possibly get while still being in the United States. Uh, we are completely at opposite sides of the country. So she told me that they have had like bags of like, you know, potato chips, like those type of bags explode due to the altitude changes uh, for things that have to be sent on flights that I guess they go a higher altitude because they're having to go over the Rocky Mountains, which are a very large mountain range if you're not familiar with the U.S. So uh, that's probably what exploded the gel pack because I've never had one of those uh, explode in an order from anybody and like I said none of my products were damaged and but one item was missing and no problem she said they'll have one out in the mail to me so I am super happy with and she was very apologetic for the fact you know that I had to you know take the couple minutes just to wipe everything off even though I mean they don't have control over the fact that 
you know, they don't manufacture the ice pack, and they did put it in there to try to protect my chocolate, which it did. You can see the Viennese Crunch did not melt. It's not, you know, they're completely free moving pieces. If they had gotten hot, they would have melted and all clumped together, and these clearly did not melt at all. So, um, they're shipping it with an ice pack absolutely did do the right thing in terms of keeping the chocolate from melting. It's just because of the altitude, apparently, that the, the gel pack exploded. So, what can you do? Certainly not their fault. And, uh, like I said, I love this company, and now that we have had one order that had a little issue, I now know that their customer service is top-notch. So, to me, what, what can you ask for? You know, great products, good prices. If you've seen my other unboxings, you, you'll, you know why I love them, and I will go through it a little bit. I like to share prices when I can on unboxings, because I think it gives you an idea to compare when you're looking at different places to purchase something. For example, this Viennese Crunch, which is, you know, I told you, a toffee dipped in chocolate, dipped in nuts. A one pound bag of it was $11.99. Now on some of the uh, bigger, you know, gift giving websites like, I'm trying to think, Harry and David's, uh, Swiss Colony, those type of sites where they do a lot of packaged food type gifts. If you got a pound of this, they would probably charge you at least twice, if not three times, just because they would have it in like a Christmas tin or something, or decorated in some sort of, you know, holiday themed tin. I would rather pay $10 a pound and get it in a plastic bag than have to pay $30 for a tin that I don't really need. Once I open this bag, I can either store it in another, like in a Ziploc bag, or I can store it in a mason jar. Um, so to me, I appreciate having the option to pay for just the product and not pay for fancy packaging that I don't need. So I've never gotten candy from them before. I've basically in the past bought uh, spices, herbs, um, let's see, I've gotten dried lentils, granulated lemon peel, I've gotten a bunch of like, you know, more for cooking type of things as opposed to ready to eat things. So this time I got some sort of more treat kind of things. So that was that. Um, next I got, this is a full two pound bag of mixed dried fruit. Now, not dehydrated, so not crunchy. This is like your regular dried fruit, like the chewy type. Um, I'm going to try to remember here because this got wet from the gel pack, so unfortunately the label did get a little smeared. I can tell you that I I know there's no nitrates, nit nitrates or nitrites in their dried fruit that I remember from the, from the website. Um, I believe, no, I'm going from memory, you can double check the website, that it said prunes, plums, that confused me a little because I thought they were the same, but maybe if you use a different variety of plums, it's not called a prune. Um, apricots, apples, kiwis, I think that's what's in this mix. I know they also had some other mixes that had like mangoes and, I think they had a mix that was like mangoes and pears and other types of fruits. But honestly, I don't, I don't like mangoes and I don't like papayas. I know a lot of people list some of their favorite d dried fruits. I don't care for them. So this mix was one that like, th these I just thought were so cool. Uh, look at the, the kiwi, like how bright green that is. Um, and again, these are like the soft and chewy. They're not dehydrated. So lots of fiber, lots, you know, they're healthy. Um, and again, the, the price, very happy with the price. This is, I'm looking at my receipt here, uh, my packing slip rather, uh, mixed fruit, it, uh, deluxe mixed fruit, two pounds, and this was $9.99. So again, if you could think about what a small package, like, like an eight ounce package of it, which would be a quarter of this, you can pay five or six dollars for that at the grocery store. 
this is a great deal. So, um, very, very happy to try this. I don't know, my son's not really a big dried fruit person. He likes the, like, freeze-dried, dehydrated, crunchy, like strawberries and stuff. I'm going to have to see if I can get him to develop a taste for this. I, I happen to like it. The last of the treat-type goodies I got is the cashew brittle. Now, again, this is a one-pound bag of cashew brittle, and it is, I'm looking at the price here, this was also $9.99 for a pound. Same type of situation. If you check out cashew brittle, which is always more expensive than peanut brittle, um, that is if you can even find somewhere that has it, a lot of times it'll be, like I said, one of those companies I mentioned before, and you're going to be paying, you're going to be either getting half as much actual candy, or you're going to be paying two to three times as much because it's being sent in decorative wrapping. Now, I don't know about you, but I have already, like, several holiday-themed tins that I just felt like I couldn't throw them away because, you know, that, that feeling of, like, oh, it's, it is pretty, and it, it is, like, useful, I guess. I could put stuff in it, or maybe I could use it to give someone a gift next year. Like, I've already got a few of those from things that I received last year, and probably the year before that. So I really don't need those fancy things, and I, once again, appreciate having the option to buy it without the fancy packaging and at a very reasonable price. I also, having had uh, the experience of making nut brittles myself, I know what goes in them. And so when I read the ingredients, I was like, oh good, there's nothing weird in here, you know, that you wouldn't put in if you made it yourself. So this has... Uh, sugar, chopped cashews, corn syrup, coconut oil, baking soda, and purified water. That's it. Nothing strange, nothing you can't pronounce, and that's one of the things I love about this company. When you read the ingredients and in things, it's, it's either, like, if it says it's a single type ingredient product, that's what's in there. There's not a ton of, you know, other weird items or spices or preservatives or other things that you might not want. And, you know, if it's something like this, something that you make, there's no, it's the same ingredients that you would use to make it homemade, as opposed to, usually if you pick up candy at a store, when you read it, there's all these kind of things that you're like, that's, what is that? It's like, that's not food. That's not something that you would have in your kitchen that you would use as an ingredient to make something. So I love that they don't put anything weird that you wouldn't put in it if you were making it in your own kitchen. So the last two things I bought, they're kind of similar. Um, one is a vegetable mix. Now these are like dehydrated vegetables. And this is basically what I'll probably use it for is adding to like broth or soup stock. Um, or maybe even like in scrambled eggs. This one is carrots, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, and onions. So, to me, that would be a good thing to put into my soup. And what's in it, are, is, is, as far as if you look at the ingredients, it's exactly those things. Carrots, red bell pepper, onion, green bell pepper. That's it. No preservatives, no salt, nothing. And I'm someone who watches their sodium because I do bloat from it. Like, I'll, I'll go up a ring size from eating too much salt. Um, so I really appreciate that, like, what they say it is, generally, that's what's in the package. When you look at their ingredients, they tend to be very simple ingredients. And you don't find that everywhere. So, love this. Now... As you may have heard me mention in other videos, my son's a little bit more of a picky eater. He does, however, like carrots. Um, in fact, carrots and peas are pretty much the only vegetable that you can put into anything without him kind of giving you the stink eye. You might be able to pass off a little bit of broccoli in something, but don't try to push it with the amounts. But seriously, carrots and peas are really the only vegetables that 
he, he really likes to have added to his food. So if I'm making some chicken soup with the dehydrated stuff like this, I can just make the soup without the vegetables in it, and literally, as I'm getting ready to serve it up, just put a tablespoon or so of this into his, and the carrots are going to rehydrate in a minute or two, and put a spoonful of the other one in mine that has the peppers in it. Um, so, again, just so easy for soups or mixing in with you know, if you're making some sort of casserole or other dish that you would want to have some carrots in, they just rehydrate pretty much instantly when they hit the hot liquid. Um, let me tell you the prices for those two. I didn't tell you the prices. The carrots, that was a, a pound of dried carrots, was $4.99. And the pound of vegetable soup mix was $9.99. So... Altogether, now, the one item that was missing, I told you I was missing an item, was a large jar, 12-ounce jar, of granulated orange peel. So, I took that $7.99. I told her that was missing, and she said they're sending one right out. So, the stuff that you see, plus the, the uh, orange peel, which will be coming, uh, was $54.94. And then the shipping was $13.90. And again, that was priority mail shipping, so I got it in two or three days from when I ordered it, uh, completely across the country. Um, I know from shipping things that that's what it costs. So, you know, I don't feel like they upcharged on the shipping at all. So, once again... This is now my third or fourth time ordering from them, and very happy with them. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my first time that there was ever anything missing in my order, and the first time I ever had reason to contact their customer service, and I was really, really happy with the, the fact you get a human answering the phone. Um, you can tell that this is a company that is, like, a small company. The people who work there take, take pride in what they do. Uh, care that their customers are happy and they listen to your, you know, to what you have to say, not only about what's wrong, but about what you like. She was very open minded and happy to hear what I liked or didn't like um, in terms of products or service, which I think is super. Alexa, stop. Lately, I think she's haunting my videos. It seems like. I can't get through a video without her either thinking someone says her name and then she starts talking, or, like, I forget that it's time that she's going to remind me to do something with a timer, and what can you do? She lives on the table next to my computer. Between her and the one whose name starts with S that's on my phone, you know, at least with her, you have to say hey before her name to get her to re respond. I once, wa once watched a TV show, and one of the main characters' name was A-L-E-X-A. -E Every time someone spoke to her, this one kept saying things like, I don't understand, or I'm not sure. I finally had to start remembering if I was going to watch an episode of that to just turn her off. Anyway, um, again... Check them out. The, the website is itsdelish.com. I T S D E L I S H dot com. And they have a variety of herbs, spices, dried fruits and veggies, uh, candies, and they have a lot of products that are vegan. Uh, they have products that are kosher. And you can, uh, yeah, check them out. Please like, subscribe, and share. Um, check out my other videos. My channel is pretty much broken up into three playlists. Uh, unboxings and reviews, gardening, which I do a lot of hydroponic and container gardening as I don't have a large yard. And then last is when I give generally um, information or opinions 
on subjects often having to do with health or disability, particularly uh, invisible disabilities and health problems uh, such as migraines or spinal cord injury. So check that out if you're interested in any of those. And again, thank you for watching my video. I always appreciate when people take the time to do so. Have a great day.